What is good everyone, OJ over here from Player Essence and welcome to the PE Nintendo Switch and Gaming News video. Today we've got some great topics for you guys so let's go in and get right into it. In Europe, Vaccine and Implosion Never Lose Hope are both hitting the Nintendo Switch eShop on July 6th and it looks like North America is going to get the game around that time as well. So just to let you guys know, what are these two games? Well, Vaccine is like a horror PS1 Resident Evil style game and then Implosion Never Lose Hope is a smartphone game but is like action adventure. They're like slashing people up. I mean, it looks pretty good. Both games are going to be on the eShop. They're both fairly cheap. I think they're both under like $15 dollars or something like that also retro gaming tube 85 sean long from nintendo enthusiast make sure you check out his review i'll have a link to that in the description below as far as vaccine goes it looks interesting if you like the old school resident evil silent hill ps1 style horror games if you like those then vaccine might be your thing then if you like action games quick easy to pick up and play then you might want to check out implosion never lose hope on the nintendo switch eShop or you can download it on your iPhone or on your Android. It's also available there, but if you want some button controls, you might want to go with the Switch version. Have any of you guys already played them or picked them up? Let me know in the comment section below. And remember, those are both coming out on July 6th. And even if they don't come out in North America or wherever you're at in the world, just make an account for whatever region and just pick it up there. You can buy it right now if you want on the Japanese eShop as far as vaccine goes. You can pick it up. It's already in English, so you can do that there or you can wait till it comes to Europe or you can just wait. <laughs> Either way, you can play it right now if you want to as far as vaccine goes and Implosion Never Lose Hope is coming soon as well. All right, and moving on to the next article here. We're gonna talk a little bit about Splatoon 2. The Nintendo Minute team recently uploaded a video. It was based right after E3 where they talked about five things that you maybe didn't know about Splatoon 2 and all of this stuff was pretty basic information but I did wanna go over it because they did have one of the lead developers there to talk to them about the game and I wanted to go over some of these things. So the first thing that they said was Salmon Run and the inspiration for that. And they wanted a game to where you can go and play locally, something that you can play competitively and cooperatively with your friends. So if you want to meet up and take your Nintendo Switch with you. And the fact that Salmon Run has a strong sense, as far as Salmon goes, of wanting to rush to one area where they were spawned at. So that's where they kind of got the idea for it. Now there's also the difficulty levels in this game. You can go all the way up to 100% and then each time you beat that it goes 5% increments all the way up to 200%. They were talking about the Nintendo Minute team how they got slaughtered like at 100% like in 20 seconds or something like that. But the development team not only at Nintendo has beat it at 100% but they've also beat it at 200% as well. So you have some pretty good Splatoon 2 players on the Nintendo development team. Now the next thing that they wanted to talk about was the story mode. And they said that the story mode was kind of the imagination of the fans because a lot of people wanted to know more about Callie and Marie so they decided to kind of base the single player with that in mind and have them a big part so they did like the Squid Sisters concerts and they did the Squid Sisters stories that they've been doing so they wanted to make sure people knew about them and the fact that it's been two years in the game world in addition to real life and the game will reflect that as far as changes in there. So that's another thing that they wanted you to know about Splatoon 2 story mode. Now moving into the next thing, or the third thing, was the fashion sense. All of the trendy and hip kids have kind of moved to like a different area of town, of Inkopolis, to where there's new brands, there's more trendy brands, and a lot of the squids want to keep up with the latest styles. However, there's still going to be stuff as far as the old brands go, so it's going to be a nice mix of the new and the old, showing off the lifestyle and culture and all the new gear that you can equip and use in Turf War or use in the Salmon Run modes and the online and all the various stuff that they have. Now for the fourth thing is the Nintendo Switch difference and one of the big things that's important about Splatoon 2 is leveling up your character, ranking up, getting a bunch of gear, but being able to take that on the go and play with friends is one of the things that the developers really wanted to point out is the Nintendo Switch difference. You're not just stuck at home, you can take that anywhere you want and play, level up, rank up to where you can have just a more dynamic game that way. So it's not just bringing the experience that was on Wii U 
to a portable system to where anywhere that you can take it it's a brand new experience as far as what they're creating in terms of not having like the dual screen saying that they actually felt that they improved upon the game the fact that it's just a single screen but the way that they put in the gyro controls or using the joy cons or just having different various play styles they feel that it's actually a better version of splatoon at its core than what the wii u did and the last thing is that they wanted to talk about as far as the competition the formations the improvements of splatoon 2 over the first one and one of the things that they really wanted to point out was the formations of teams and playing against each other now that they have things called league battles where you can put together with teams and you can have limited periods of time where you can go out and see how many points you can get they also added the spectator mode so they're hoping that the fusion of the league points and then the different types of things that you can do with spectator mode really drives the online interaction and drives the online content when it comes to streaming the game when it comes to showing it off e-leagues tournaments all that they want all that to be front and center and that's why they did the splatoon 2 invitational at e3 for the really hardcore it is that they added in the modes where you could have eight nintendo switches so big LAN parties and if you really want to get technical you really want to get hardcore into the competitive aspect you could have your own tournaments set them all up similar to how smash brothers does or street fighter or any other game but you can have that with splatoon 2 having up to eight nintendo switches and having those four on four battles that you see see at Nintendo's E3 so they're really hoping for that as far as LAN play goes get the most responsive controls not online you're right then and there so to me all of these changes are really good all this stuff is awesome I can't wait to play Splatoon 2 that's one of my most anticipated games and really for Salmon Run I am so hyped for Salmon Run more than anything because I love the Gears of War horde mode and then they're putting that in something that's as unique and innovative as Splatoon so I'm really looking forward to that what is your favorite new change or addition to Splatoon 2? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the last article here. We've got some more news from Andrew Sampson. He's the developer behind the Rainway app on the Nintendo Switch. Now, for those who don't know, the Rainway app lets you stream from your PC to your Nintendo Switch in terms of games. So you download the Rainway app on your PC and your Nintendo Switch or probably just your Nintendo Switch. You connect it there to your PC and you'll be able to stream your games straight from there onto your Nintendo Switch. Now some people were asking as far as why isn't he using the Joy-Cons and he's answered that multiple times saying that he really can't because he's holding the camera, he's holding a phone, and he's holding the Switch and then holding the payload. So there's just so many things. But yes, it will be available to play with the Joy-Cons. He's still working on it. That will be something that you will be able to do once it is finally released. And I've talked about this in my last video, but he knows that this app is mainly targeted at Nintendo Switch owners who won't be able to play a lot of these games as far as what's already been released on the Nintendo Switch, but they have a PC that they can run it on and they can stream it straight to the Nintendo Switch. Some people are saying that you can use this app and you can connect it through online and still be able to play your games as far as your home network goes. I'm not so sure about that. What I do know is that I felt it was more like a Steam link or something to where you need to be somewhat close proximity of the base or the source system. So that's still some stuff that we need to figure out when it comes to that. And of course, people in the comment section, if you do know more about it. But what I do know is that I'll be able to play this line down in bed. And that's the biggest thing for me. But what he did show off here was Overwatch. Earlier, he showed off Nier Automata. And now he actually showed off Overwatch. And he was using the mouse and keyboard on the Nintendo Switch via the Rainway app, but of course you will be able to use the Joy-Cons and potentially even be able to use other controllers, maybe like the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and other ones. They still have a lot of development and programming and stuff to do, but yeah, they showed off Overwatch running on there, so about a good 30 seconds or so, and everything was looking okay. Obviously the frame rate still needs to be improved and other things can definitely be better, but overall I think it's making great progress because this probably still isn't going to release until 2018, so there's still some time before this thing even comes out. A lot of people have been saying, oh, will Nintendo even approve this? Nintendo can send a cease and desist, whatever the case is, which is all true. Those are definitely valid things, valid concerns to bring up, although I don't think he's going to take this much time showing it off and saying here's this and here's that because he's told us that he's been in talks with Nintendo and that he got good news news and he feels like everything's going to be a go so it's not like he said there's been any roadblocks or there's been any major problems as far as this app coming to the nintendo switch especially because we've been hearing that other developers even like nicolas and potentially even discord could be bringing apps to nintendo switch so if those developers are going to be bringing stuff there i'm not sure why he wouldn't be able to bring his and once again nintendo's kind of being somewhat open when it comes to the nintendo switch they're having cross play with xbox and with uh, minecraft 
So I don't see why Nintendo would necessarily block this type of thing when it's just a streaming application. So we'll see if it actually ends up releasing. I'm thinking since he's putting so much time and effort into making this because this isn't easy. No matter how much people want to just say, oh, well, yeah, that's just nothing. This is not easy to do this. It's definitely work. He's taking his time. He's making sure that it's going to be good because I don't know how they're going to monetize this. All I know is that if this does work, it's going to help everyone involved when it comes to Nintendo, third parties, whatever the case is, it's going to improve the value of the system. I think it's actually going to get more people to be interested in developing for the system and much more just because there's just going to be more buzz around the system outside of just whatever Nintendo has. But it's one of those things, like I said, it's really going to take time, right? As more people buy the system, more developers become interested in developing on the system and putting their games on there with a healthier and bigger install base. So overall, I just think it's good. Overall, it's good for Nintendo. It's good for Andrew Sampson. It's good for Rainway. It's good for everyone involved if this thing does get released. So that's why I think Nintendo is going to be on board with it. And we're going to see other developers put apps out as well. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and check out the links in the description below. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter. Go ahead and give us a like and a follow on all of our social media it really helps us spread the content of player essence across the interwebs in addition to youtube also make sure you check out our patreon page pledge any tier and be entered in to win some awesome prizes we also have discord voice chat for all of our live streams and ten dollar prize eShop tournaments for mario kart 8 deluxe splatoon 2 will be having arms and so much more so support pe live and pe arena right here on player essence also make sure you hit that like button if you did like this video let me know you guys want more content like this going forward in the future and subscribe to player essence for the latest news reviews discussions and more thank you so much for watching i will catch you ninja for the next video peace